The Toronto Blue Jays have made another interesting signing that may or may not have an impact on the team going forward. So we'll discuss that alongside discuss a potential trade the Blue Jays could make for a role this Chapman of the Kansas City Royals. So we're going to break that down much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? Thank you, your host of Jays Digest. And before we do get into the video, just a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. We're 100 subs away from 7,000. So if you could hit that button, it would mean a lot. I know the Blue Jays are struggling right now, but we're still pumping out daily content for you guys. So your support's been unbelievable, and hopefully you guys can uh, continue to show great support. But we have a couple of pieces of news to go over today because the Blue Jays don't play. They have their second off day in four days. But after today, they play 17 straight. So it's going to be a very, very busy 17 straight days for uh, the Blue Jays and us as well creating content for you guys but let's get into the first topic which is the Jays make an interesting signing now the Jays have made a few you know signings in the past couple of weeks you know a couple call-ups Jay Jackson I called up but this is an interesting one and one that a player that a lot of people don't really know about so I'll pop up the report that came out yesterday saying the Blue Jays signed Wes Parsons to minor league deal now if you don't know who Wes Parsons in I'll go over it now in a second but he's played for the uh, Colorado Rockies as of uh, as of recently, but Parsons 30 was an undrafted free agent who nonetheless worked his way up to the major leagues a few years ago. He tossed 39 innings over the 2018 and 19 seasons for Atlanta and Colorado, posted an ERA of 5.67 in that time, along with a 16% strikeout rate. You can see that there, 18% walk and uh, 45% ground ball. He was in the Rockies player pool during the 2020 season, but didn't get called up to the majors. Now. Of course, this isn't super promising. These numbers aren't super promising when you first look at them. And this isn't someone that we expect, at least right now. He is 30 years old to have an impact this season. But maybe in the future, you can never have too much depth. And that's kind of what the uh, the point of this is here. But here's some more stuff here. And this is kind of the more interesting stuff. Is that the right he went to Korea in 2021, signing with the, uh, the NC Dinos of the KBO League. He worked out of their rotation in 2021, tossing 133 innings with a 3.72 ERA um, striking out a 26.4% clip, although having a high walk rate. And he made eight starts in 2022 with a 3.56 ERA, but then was released. So there is a bit of promise here. A, uh, certainly a little bit of promise. Of course, he hasn't shown it at the major league level yet. He's 30 years old, but as you see, the Jays have been stacking up their farm system and he has performed in the KBO. I wonder if, and the question here is maybe, again, he's 30 years old, so they're not really storing him to develop him. I would suspect, or I'm going to ask you guys as well, if you think he'll have any impact maybe next year, or uh, or do you think it's just depth? Now, I'd lean towards the side of it's probably just depth. He probably doesn't play in the Blue Jays at all going forward, but there is a chance that maybe they use him as a long relief guy out of the bullpen, because that is a, you know, a spot in the bullpen that we don't really have right now. Maybe they call him up if an injury happens as a long relief guy, because he has started a lot through 133 innings there in 2021 in the KBO, very successfully with a 3.72 ERA. So maybe they use him as a long relief guy out of the pen going forward, or maybe they call him up um, for a spot start. Of course, you have guys like Zach Thompson who are probably ahead of him, but you can never have too much depth. And a very interesting signing, because it is someone that, you know, performed fairly well at the KBO League, and we've seen players, you know, translate that into the, uh, in the MLB, but um, in the MLB so far, he hasn't really performed. So just a very, very interesting um, little tidbit there. And again, you can see here, very interesting numbers, not very good in the MLB, but very solid in the KBO. So maybe the JC something they can work with there. He strikes out a lot, but he also walks a lot. So maybe they'll be trying to develop him into a potential strikeout guy out of the bullpen. You never know. Because they have, you know, they got guys like Jay Jackson are on the older side and they've been doing, you know, all right. So who knows? Let me know what your thoughts are on that in the comment section. A very interesting signing for the Blue Jays and one that may pay dividends going forward. But let's move on now to the second topic. And you saw a sneak peek of it there. But the Jays traded for Rollis Chapman. And this is a, a question that I'm going to bring up for you all now. And one that I've been thinking about a lot today. I'm curious if you guys think that the Blue Jays should have interest in trading for a Rollis Chapman. Now, as you can see here, this is the uh, tweet. Royals receiving trade interest in Aroldis Chapman. This was posted by Ken Rosenthal. You can see here, the Royals are getting early trade interest in Aroldis Chapman, reports Ken uh, Rosenthal of The Athletic. The seven-time All-Star is off to a strong start to the season. Chapman appeared in 14 games and tallied 12 and two-thirds innings out of Matt Quantrill's bullpen. He's only allowed five runs for earned and posted a 20-6 to six, uh, strikeout rate. The point is, he has been absolutely dominant this season. By far one of the best relievers that, uh, that the Royals have. Probably by far their best reliever. And the Kansas City Royals are not in a spot to compete. They have a few young guys like Bobby Wood Jr. and people like that. But they are not competing at all right now. And the question is, 
what would a trade look like for the Blue Jays? Or do you think the Blue Jays should try to acquire someone like a Roldis Chapman? Because you look here at the um, his baseball savant page and wow, it jumps off the charts. And just last year, he was with the Yankees and he had a very, very poor year. His velocity wasn't there, but he changed something. He turned a corner. Something in the Kansas City Royals organization has flipped his, uh, completely flipped his, I guess his career at this point. He's not young. Tons of reds. Does not get hit hard at all. 83% hard hit percentage. The average exit velocity is all elite. So if you're unfamiliar with baseball savant, the higher the red, the better it is. So he's in a 100th percentile fastball velocity, meaning he throws the fastest average velocity fastball in the league. He averages 100 miles per hour. And what a... Uh, a comeback season for for Aroldis Chapman and the Blue Jays do not have very many lefties in their bullpen a matter of fact they just have Tim Meza who has been absolutely dominant so far I believe a sub one ERA and he throws 95 miles per hour but the bullpen's been very very shaky as of late and it's a question that I want to ask to you and one that I think the Blue Jays of course he has a lot of off-field issues and that might and most likely will just stray the Blue Jays away but from a pure baseball perspective he would be a very good addition to the bullpen very good addition He's unbelievable so far this year. He throws absolute gas, and he would be our hardest thrower by far. So having, well, him, I guess, alongside Nate Pearson, but he, you know, the back of that bullpen in the seventh, eighth inning alongside Eric Swanson. If you go Eric Swanson to to Eric, uh, to Roldis Chapman, the nasty splitter to his, you know, 104-mile-per-hour fastball he can touch, it could be a very, very interesting um, bullpen combo along with Jordan Romano who has been struggling as of late but is still another pretty very good reliever with pretty high velocity as well but let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section on Aroldis Chapman again you can pause here the Royals are getting early trade interest and I wonder if the Blue Jays are the team or a team that is interested the teams haven't been uh, leaked yet but I'd assume the Blue Jays are showing some level of interest because their bullpen has cost them a few games and Adding another high leverage arm, you can never have too many high leverage arms. So adding another one of those is something that I'm sure the Blue Jays are considering. And if it's a lefty, that's uh, that's even better, especially with the Ricky Tiedemann injury. He doesn't seem like he's going to be getting called up anytime soon. Um, he's obviously a flamethrower lefty, not going to be called up anytime soon. So maybe, just maybe the Blue Jays will show some interest in Aroldis Chapman. But again, he has a lot of off-field issues. He's had some bad things in his past. And it's not someone that necessarily is a good clubhouse guy at all either. So I don't know if the Blue Jays will be interested, but from a pure baseball perspective, he is definitely a, a very elite pitcher this year and someone that is probably almost surely going to get traded for the Kansas City Royals because of uh, how bad they are. So he's definitely going to get traded. But I'll wrap that up there. Let me know what your thoughts are on that in the comments as we move on to a look ahead. And this is just a quick, brief look ahead to the next 17 games. We start a series with the Braves tomorrow. And uh, we're back home, so it's going to be interesting to see how we do against the Braves coming off of our getting swept by the Phillies, and then before that sweeping the Pirates, and then before that getting swept again by the Red Sox. It's been a very, very up and down se season so far. Tons, uh, you know, of emotions there. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but the Blue Jays need to start winning, and hopefully they can do that starting tomorrow. So that'll wrap up the video. Let me know what your thoughts are on all these new moves, or this new move made by the Blue Jays, the potential for a Chapman trade in the comment section below, and we'll see you tomorrow.